We continue today in Pirkei Avos, and we began yesterday, Perek, uh, excuse me, Perek Aleph Mishnah Beis, the first chapter, the second Mishnah. We discussed an introduction to Shimon HaTzadik, who was Shimon HaTzadik, what made him so great, what was unique about him, his incredible, his incredible meeting with none other than Alexander the Great. So Shimon HaTzadik teaches us that the world stands on three pillars. The first of those pillars is Torah. Torah, we understand the centrality of Torah. We understand the importance of Torah. We understand the importance of learning Torah and of observing Torah. But in reality, why is it that Torah is so important? And Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau, in his Parish on Pirkei Abba, says something so beautiful. He says, we often look at Torah as a body of knowledge. Torah is a body of knowledge. I, I, I want to know how to keep Shabbos, so I learn Torah. I want to know how to acquire a portion of the world to come, I learn Torah. I want to learn how to eat kosher, I learn Torah. So Torah becomes a very, a very pragmatic discipline. I want to know what to do in life and what not to do in life. And so ultimately I turn to Torah. But Rabbi Lanz says something so beautiful. He says, Limud ha-Torah no'ed barosh u-barishona b'romim esa adam liyachsha es machshavto u-lahatim lo das elyon mahi. Torah is much more than sim- a simple list of do's and don'ts. Torah is a window into the divine. When a person learns Torah, by definition, he establishes a connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a deep and beautiful connection. In fact, the Medrash relates that God referred to the Torah as his daughter. And the Medrash relates that when Hashem gave us the Torah at Har Sinai, the mashal that the Medrash gives, the, the parable, is like a king who had one child, the da- a daughter, a beloved daughter, and it was finally time for her to get married. And so they find a wonderful suitor, and on the day of the wedding, the king calls over his future son-in-law and says, listen, here's the deal. There is nothing more important to me than my daughter. I love her, I've raised her, I've invested everything into her. And now I'm giving her to you as a wife. So to tell you that I sh- you should come and live with me, that would be inappropriate. The young couple has to start out on their own. To say that I, the father-in-law, should come to live with you, understood from the beginning why that's a bad idea. So what does the father-in-law, what does the king say to his future son-in-law? Just do me a favor, wherever you go, make sure you have a guest room. And so that way I can always visit, I can always feel comfortable being with you, seeing my daughter, seeing you. And the Medrash relates that when Hashem gave us the Torah, He says to the Jewish people, this is my Torah, she's my daughter. I love her, I cherish her, but I love you too. And I think the two of you would make an incredible couple. Am Yisrael and Torah, could be incredibly magnificent together. To tell you, the Jewish people, that you have to live in the celestial sphere, impossible. To say that I, got will exclusively live with you, not good either. So instead, just promise me that wherever you live, you always make room for me in your life. When we learn Torah, we are learning the daughter of HaKadosh Baruch When we learn Torah, we are establishing a beautiful, deep, and meaningful connection. But it's more than that. When we learn, our eyes are opened up to the realities of life. We see things in a different way. We understand things in a different way. We look at ourselves and we look at others and we look at HaKadosh Baruch Hu and we look at circumstances in a different way. Because when you engage Torah, you're engaging the divine. And when you engage the divine, you undergo a cathartic process of elevation and really transcendence that a person who looks at the world through eyes which have ingested, which have taken in Torah, is different than a person who looks at the world through eyes without Torah. Torah doesn't doesn't just give us technical details for how to perform obligations and avoid punishments, but Torah gives us a way to fundamentally look at the world. How do you see things? And again, now even also, look at all the circumstances unfolding in our world. So do we look at the events that are unfolding now through the prism of Torah or just through the prism of just a regular set of human eyes? And the difference between those two is so dramatic. Ultimately, again, one who looks at the current circumstances through the lens of Torah may not be able to understand the reason for things, but understands how to properly utilize these incredibly tumultuous days for elevation, for growth, and for self-actualization. The beauty of Torah is not just simply that it tells us how to live, what to do, it, what not to do, but the Torah itself and the learning of it provides us a connection to our Father above and gives us a proper way 
to view everything in this world, including ourselves. But the Bar Tenura says something amazing. The Bar Tenura comments on this mission and he writes, what does it mean when, when Shimon HaTzadik says that one of the pillars of the world is Torah? See, he explains, She'omale lo kiblu Yisrael as Torah, lo nivru ushamayim aretz. Had the Jewish people not accepted the Torah at Mount Sinai, the earth and the heavens would simply cease to exist. The Gemara explains that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, the entire creation was predicated on our acceptance of Torah. If we accept Torah, wonderful. If we don't accept Torah, there's no need for the world to exist. So the Bartanura says that when Shimon HaTzadik says that literally the world stands on three pillars, one of those pillars is Torah. You see, we often think that that means is my learning of Torah supports the world. My observance of Torah supports the world. The Bartanura says, no, no, no. What it means is the fact that we said Na'asav and Ishma, we will do and we will listen. The fact that we accepted the Torah at Mount Sinai thousands of years ago, it's that acceptance that allowed for the continuation of the world. Because without that acceptance, the world itself would have lost all of its meaning. So literally, again, the acceptance of the Torah is a pillar upon which the world sits. And I think there's such a profound message. Because what that means is, thousands of years ago, when our ancestors said, remember again, that was spontaneous. They said, we will do, we will listen. Moshe didn't prompt them. No one fed them that line. They made the decision to go ahead and recite that statement. They felt connected. They felt they felt a sense of devekos to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So they said that. That was their verbal commitment. They didn't have to, but they did it. And isn't it amazing how the decisions that we make have such future repercussions and ramifications? So often when we look at our decisions, we look at them in a vacuum. We assume when I make a decision, it impacts the here and now. But what we don't realize is that every single decision we make has a current impact, but also almost inevitably has a future impact. And that future impact often unfolds in ways that we could have never foreseen, unfolds in ways that we could have never imagined. But there is always a future impact. Do you think that our ancestors, when they said Na'asev and Ishma, understood that hinging on that statement, on that acceptance, was the entire earth the heavens, the universe. Had they said no, or maybe even had they just said, oh, okay, maybe, maybe all of creation would have come to an end. It's the Nasev and Nishma that our ancestors said thousands of years ago that allows us to be here today. It's that acceptance of Torah that became a pillar upon which the world sits. And it's a message we have to take into our lives. Because so many times when we make decisions in life, big decisions, little decisions, we only look at them through the lens of the here and now. What's the impact of the decision now? But we have to train ourselves to the best of our ability, to borrow the wording of Chazal, to be roa es hanolad, to see what will occur later on, to recognize that when I make a decision now, it's going to have an impact today, an impact tomorrow, and quite possibly an impact in years from now. And to the best of my ability, I have to try to figure out what is that future impact going to be? And is that the impact I want? Could I somehow look into the future, try to analyze what the future ramifications would be and allow that to inform my present decision-making opportunities? Our ancestors made a decision that gives us life to this very day. May we be privileged to understand the power of our decision-making and find the courage and find the wisdom to make the right ones. Wishing everyone a wonderful day.